Hey guys, Rebecca here from yarnandchai.com. Most crocheters at some point in their crochet journey will wonder if they should sell their creations. So with cooler weather rolling in and holiday craft show signage popping up all over town, you might start thinking about the possibility of making some extra money with or even building a business around this awesome talent that you have. But how do you know if selling is really worth your time? And if you decide it is worth your time, how do you find your target market? Is it your family and friends, or strangers perusing craft shows, or online shoppers in their pajamas? Before I pivoted my business to become a designer, I sold my creations, and I've tried it all. So to help you sort some of this out, I've listed four of the most popular ways to get started selling your creations. Friends and family, craft fairs, Facebook, and artisan sites. Along with some of the positives and negatives I believe come with each market and tips to help you decide which one is the path for you. Here we go. Market number one, friends and family. This is a really, really common place to start a selling journey, which is why everyone's doing it. Think about how many of your friends have started a home business over the past decade. You know who they are because they've been taught to start building their businesses on, you guessed it, family and friends. A positive of this market is that if you have a supportive family and friends base, this is an easy and encouraging place to start. Chances are they've already been bugging you to make them something. If they truly support you, they'll understand when you excitedly tell them that you're starting a business and can make them that item for X amount of dollars. A negative to this market is that while it may be a great place to start, no matter how supportive they are, you cannot sustain a business on orders from friends and family. They may be the ones who know you best and love you most, but it's not their responsibility to keep you in business. And side note, no one wants the awkwardness that comes when a family member never gets around to paying you. The verdict, should you sell to friends and family? If you constantly have people you know hitting you up for your latest creations, then yes. But remember, don't rely on this as a long-term business solution. Market number two, craft fairs. Oh, craft fairs. Some crafters swear by them and even boast of making a living with them. Others have nothing but disappointing experiences. Now I could do a whole blog post on craft fairs alone, but I'll save that for another time. To sell in this market, you need to have built up an inventory of products. It can be lots of fun, but labor intensive too. Here are the pros and cons. Positive. Craft fairs are social events and sales-minded people love the interaction with potential customers. Negative, finding the right craft fairs to participate in can take some serious research. Otherwise, you might spend many, many hours building up an inventory and ending up barely selling enough to cover your table fee. So here's the verdict. Should you sell at craft fairs? Well, if you already have more crocheted creations than you know what to do with, you're confident that the people attending the show are your target market, hint, not bargain hunters, and you love customer interaction, then yeah. Otherwise, craft fairs can be a bit of a shot in the dark, and that's a lot of time to put into something that doesn't make you much money in the end. Market number three, Facebook. Local buy-sell swap groups have popped up all over Facebook, and chances are your town has one too. Facebook also introduced its own official version with the Facebook Marketplace in 2016. Positive, selling in a local Facebook group can be a quick way to earn some cash. You can sell made to order, alleviating the need to build up a time-consuming inventory, and if no one responds to your sale post, you haven't lost anything. Negative, selling locally online is often where you have the most potential for failed transactions and disappearing customers. Unlike with craft fairs where the transaction and delivery of goods is instant, an Etsy which protects its sellers by charging customers up front, you are on your own in this market and will need to put up your own safeguards so that you don't end up with finished items and no payment. 
verdict should you sell on Facebook. This can be a great place to collect orders as long as you're willing to come up with a plan to protect yourself from people who ask you to make something and never pay up. I am a huge advocate of taking money up front. And market number four, artisan sites such as Etsy. Crafting has experienced a resurgence in popularity in recent years, which has enabled Etsy to become a household name. The way Etsy has developed as a platform, the good, the bad, and the ugly, could also be a whole other blog post, but as it stands now, Etsy remains a way for crafters to potentially reach a global market that they never could have found on their own. Positive. For the most part, people shopping on Etsy are not bargain hunting. They know they're on an artisan site and are usually prepared to spend accordingly. They also know that art takes time. So selling your creations made to order, meaning you don't make it until someone purchases it, is common. Negative. The sheer volume of sellers on Etsy can feel completely overwhelming. And in order to compete in those search engines, care has to be taken to ensure that your product listings are beautifully photographed and well described. There's a wealth of information out there on how to show up in Etsy searches, but it's a time consuming learning curve that Etsy doesn't make any easier with its frequent operation changes. So here's the verdict. Should you sell on Etsy? An Etsy shop is easy to set up. And if you sell made to order, you don't need to build up an inventory. If that sounds good to you and you're willing to do a little research on listing visibility, then selling on Etsy or similar platforms might be perfect for you. I'm going to leave you with one last thought, something I truly believe is so important for crafters to understand. Say it with me, guys. Bargain hunters are not my target market. No matter where you decide to sell, stop trying to turn bargain hunters into high paying customers. Don't waste negative energy wondering why someone doesn't want to pay what your creation is worth. Instead, go out and find someone who does. They're out there, I promise. Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, so comment your questions, experiences, or tips below, and we can share in each other's knowledge. Best wishes in your selling journey, guys.